Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. This is a weekend update for the week ending Friday, August 7, 2020. We are looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, what we have on the docket is a very strong close to not only close the day, but to close the week. Speaking of week, we're going to focus a little bit on the weekly close today. There's a lot of stuff going on. So what we have to do is focus on two things. And these are my two favorite things is price and time. As we know, time is more important than price. We're going to look at both because we may be in the midst of a convergence at a very important price and a very important time. We've been discussing of late the fact that, and we have to do the air quotes, we're looking for a top. The term or the word looking means we're on the lookout. We're looking for signs and signal of a trend change. How do you notice those? How do you identify those? Those are found in the course, Lazy E-mini Trader. There are many of them, so we'll use one as an example. Let's just say at some point over the next few days, we see the market gap higher, crap out, finish on the lows, create a daily chart reversal candle. That would be a pretty good indicator that we might have found the top. That'll do a couple of things. A, first we'll be able to identify it from an intraday perspective while that type of activity is unfolding. Secondly, we'll have something to trade against because if we want to take a short position, if we're expecting a turn, if we're expecting a top, then we want to take a short position knowing where we're wrong. We have to have a spot where we're able to cut and run and it has to be reasonable enough to where if we have to lose we lose small and fast these trades when they do occur and we're looking for a turn that's going to be more than one or two percent so we're looking for at minimum of a multi-week type of corrective move to begin doesn't have to be a crash doesn't have to be tremendous in percentage or points but a correction is what's on the docket what do we have when we look at the daily chart we have a market in the SPY that basically finished at the highs we closed well above the gap that we were eyeballing at 333.48 and they also closed above another important number I want to go back and forth a little bit between the SPY chart and the ES chart today in fact the ES chart you see a line at the very top of the screen that's the ES's important number and they closed above that as well. So not only did the SPY close above an important gap, but the ES, the futures contract, closed above its gap, which was different from the SPY gap, so it's even more bullish yet going into the weekly close. That being said, remember, when it feels really, really right, it's generally going to be wrong, and vice versa, when it feels really, really wrong, it's generally going to be right. At the onset, we said we were focused in price and time. So price is what we just discussed. The market closed above a couple of important prices depending on which market you look at. Now, since it's the weekly close, we revert to the weekly chart and we see the same gap and we see we are approaching the all-time highs. We're basically a stone's throw away, a chip shot, a walk in the park maybe the market challenges the old high maybe it comes up slightly short and turns around maybe it makes a new high reverses back down and fails one of those three things is likely in the cards there's a fourth thing which is making a new high and it keeps going in order to avoid a pie in the face in that scenario you can't take a position until the market gives you a reason and something to trade against now on a side note could somebody take a short position and say well from here I don't really care what happens as long as they don't close above the high for let's just say at least one day but I'll even give it two or three days I'm not saying this is the ideal scenario and I'm not advocating this. I'm saying this is a strategy. In that scenario, you're basically saying, I'm just going to put a stake in the ground and I'm going to say within a couple of months, the market's going to be lower than it is now, not higher. And therefore, 
I'm taking the short position. There are a lot of ways to spread risk around. It depends on how much risk a trader is willing to take. I like my way, waiting for a sign and or signal of a trend change until and unless one of those occurs, you're unlikely to find yourself in a short position and the market making new highs and going higher. Now, let's talk for a second about time. Those traders that have taken the course, lazy e-mini trader, will recognize that we're coming into an important period in time. So we understand that since this is a weekly chart, we have to wait for a weekly close to determine whether something is actually taking hold or not, and intra-week, between Monday and Friday, a lot of stuff can happen in the market. It can travel a lot of points in both directions intra-week. So a weekly chart, we have to be aware that while from a time perspective, the weekly chart is setting up, a lot of stuff can happen while it's setting up. What if I brought up a monthly chart and we talked again about time? Would you also recognize that we're coming into an important period in time? The trend is clear. Technically speaking, there's nothing wrong with the market. It was until they did a repair job. The trend is up, period, full stop. Doesn't mean we can't have a correction. Case in point. Here's a monthly chart. Look where the 20 period moving average is. Comes in at about 298. 37 SPY points, 370 S&P handles. The market doesn't even have to come down to the 20 period moving average to still have a pretty significant corrective move. Let's put it in perspective once again. It's somewhere right around where this line represents 298, 299, 300. Again, it doesn't have to get there if the market were to correct. And again, this doesn't happen overnight, doesn't happen in two days, barring the crash scenario, which obviously can happen, it has happened. Two crashes in the same year, I don't think so. Leading up into the November 3rd election this year, I might take that back. You never know what's going to happen. But look what we have here. This is also interesting. So we have a low. This is an important low over here. It's a reversal. And then we have a higher low. And what happens if the market comes down in this vicinity? Won't they want to try and put in a higher low first before giving up the ghost if they were going to do that in that hypothetical scenario that they are coming back down? And... Just so happens, there's a 200 period moving average right here. Now, this is kind of flattened out, so it's not going to move much off of 305. Over time, maybe it gets flat, maybe it still creeps up a little bit, but 305 is around where it is. So, what you just saw was, A, you were inside my head. That was all done in real time, no preparation. I didn't do that this afternoon and then do it again in the video. That was absolutely unpacked in real time on live TV. But what that also was, was way out over our skis. Remember, the market's still going up. This daily chart, just like the other charts we've looked at, it's in an uptrend. We're approaching the all-time highs. What I'm saying is they're unlikely to just keep going. If we look back on the daily chart and we see what was going on here at the all-time highs, there's not a lot more going on above this gap. You have the last important pivot, the pivot high on the 19th of February. That high is 339.08. Does the market get to 340? 3,400, big fat round number in the ES, spike through by 10, 20, 30 points, and then fail from there. That's certainly a possibility. Up in that neighborhood, you're going to get everybody in the boat who can be, who wants to be, who even understands what it means to be bullish. Once the last guy gets in the boat, what happens? Once it gets off the dock, they sink. What does the flip side look like? What happens if we wake up Monday morning, Sunday night, they start to fail, wake up to a big gap down? What's the line in the sand? First order of business is the gap that they closed above, 333.48. Next order of business, and here's a 60-minute chart. Next order of business would be back to the former breakout area, which they paid a visit to the top end of today. We'll get to that in a few minutes. And then you have the gap, which is also represented by the big fat round number, 330.03. And slightly lower, this would also be considered another former breakout area. So coming down to 
329, 328 in that neighborhood would also represent a viable area of support. Since we brought it up, inside the numbers, the pre-market commentary, right out of the gate, we were focused in the phony jobs number at 830. I'm sitting here at zero dark 30, had not much to say waiting on that number, so that's all I had to say. Will it be a drop, pop, or dud? Already focused on where they close the week relative to the same gap is really important. Same meaning 333.48. Then they goosed them a little bit at 8.30, then they dropped them after that. Let's see what happened as the day started to get underway. Check out the early thoughts. All right, where's the spot? The former breakout area is a zone around 33.24 to 33.19, it's about five points, give or take. SPY 332.50 down to 332, give or take. Again, it's a repeating area. Under normal garden variety conditions, this is where the buy the dip crowd should show up. Remember that comment because we're going to look at exactly what happened. You know the routine, right of the vertical, today's activity, five minute chart. And there in blue, 332.50 down to 332 what was the low 332 30 now this happened in the afternoon rather than this morning so unfortunately in the afternoon towards the end of the day into friday you don't know exactly what's going to happen taking a position is not the same as taking it in the morning when you have all day to maneuver around the position running out of clock is obviously trader's choice nevertheless we're focused on the numbers, and the takeaway is the same area that was supposed to be support this morning ended up to be support anyway. Why? Because it's a former breakout area, and the market loves to do what? Come back and test former breakout and former breakdown areas. Moving right along. Early on, the market goes back to test after it opened below, Runs back to test 333.48. And then if they get above, we want to know where they're going. Where were they going? 333.96 is a gap to be filled up north. Back to the chart. There it is. Up top in blue, 333.96. And you can see here the market ran up after opening below the gap to what? To an area that should be overhead resistance. Number one, should be magnetic when they get close because it's a gap and gaps tend to be magnetic. They pull price in to fulfill the gap. And as noted early on, should provide some overhead resistance. What happened? They came right down to run a test even below of the same 333.48 or that general area and right back up again. So you can see what was going on all day. Our pivot was 333.48 and you'll see that in the notes that was always going to determine the bearish or bullish stance for the day was above or below the pivot below the pivot opens the door for what the former breakout area where was that 332.50 down to 332 know thy numbers and then obviously what happened into the end of the day they found support and they had an end of the day jam session and also interesting and this is how they try to get everybody out try the shakeout operation Right here, you can see in this candle here where they run up to get above that former gap and then look like they're going to collapse all the way back down only to have an end-of-the-day jam session. That is absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, courtesy of the Trick Trap Fool and Frustrate crew. That was after 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we always say, after about 3 o'clock, anything goes. From this point forward, what I'd like you to do is pause the video whenever you feel necessary read the notes and go back to the chart to see what happened double check the work what you saw was the broad brush or the summary if you will of what happened through the trading day but you have to read the notes you have to see what was going on and decide whether or not you are comfortable having a tour guide through the market each and every day because that's exactly what this becomes now here all of a sudden midday it's kind of quiet we need to be thinking about the weekly close where are they going to close the week above or below even the futures gap 3338.50 constant dissemination of data constant education this is the ticket i'm not feeding you every single day i'm teaching you how to fish for yourself so that you can eat for the rest of your life with the combination i like to call it 
the three pillar approach, the combination of the lazy e-mini trader learning the foundation of how markets really work, these videos each night, that's really like a review session of every day, a review of certain components of the course, it's continuing education. And then you get your PhD with inside the numbers. You can see at 356, so into the end of the day, what did they do? They went back to test the former breakout area and went right back up again. It's like a broken record because they do it all the time. The trend is your friend until it's not. Market hasn't given you a reason yet to say the trend is broken, to say the uptrend is broken or a reversal is at hand. We haven't seen that yet. How many people shorted that gap yesterday and are still short right now and by chance if the market gaps up on Monday, they're going to have to check their shorts. Stocks on the move. We're going to take a look at Twilio. It says jump target. We have to look at it anyway. Baba, Datadog, and AYX. Twilio. Twilio opened below the first number, never got to the second number, missed the second number by 21 cents, and it went on a little excursion or rocket ride. I put it in the notes and I got faked out because traders send me emails all the time and I got a lot of emails this morning, thanks for Twilio. I wasn't in the trade and then when I was writing the notes, when I was updating inside the numbers, I just had a brain fart. And I put it in there anyway, forgetting it opened below the first number, never get to the second number. Why do traders jump in anyway? You'd have to ask them. That's not following the rules. Obviously, anybody can do whatever they want. Sometimes, and we know this, sometimes these stocks open below the number and they shoot right back up. Sometimes they open below the number and they shoot right down. And that's what I'm avoiding by taking it off the table. But it's always trader's choice. Everybody does whatever they want to do. What I'm doing is telling you what I prefer to do. I teach it to run it as a business, trying to minimize risk, smooth out the returns by being consistent. Baba, hit the first number, getting a haircut at the open. Look at the low here. The low was 254.08, low in this candle 254.10, against 254.20 on the board bright and early, has a nice ride up to a high of 257.76. So they did the deal in terms of a minimum we're looking for, and then they came back down. So once they came back down, that's it. Nobody's in this trade anymore. And the second number just didn't work until it did later in the day. These are the trades we want. We want the ones early in the morning when the market's running, when we have the volatility, when we have the most participants we're going to have during the day, it's going to be in the morning, in the first hour, in the first 90 minutes. Beyond that, the volume tends to dry up and things change. It's not the same trade in the afternoon. Not to say they don't work. They do, but it's not the same. Case in point, how about Datadog? What a great name. 74.59, bright and early. Look at this haircut, by the way. Look at this haircut, by the way. Stock closes at 89.95, plus shipping and handling. Now... It's trading and opens up the day around $82, $83. I'm all the way down at $74.5. In the morning, I don't think this thing has a chance, starts to bounce. I'm not even watching it. Later on, I notice this thing's just creeping, creeping, creeping. And then obviously I notice I know where it's creeping. It's creeping to what? It's creeping to the number. $74.59 or thereabouts, plus or minus. And then what happens? turns around, goes back in the other direction. But you see, in the afternoon, this one happened at, let's see, this is at 14.30. In English, that's like 2.30 in the afternoon. So you got to bounce, but you never got a rocket ride. It's not the same in the afternoon. Made a high of 76.14. Anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. The number was magnetic. AXY, we're not going to give it the classification of a burger, but it was a loser but here's what happened. Opens below the first, comes into the second, and then it basically treaded water right underneath the second number and basically floundered around all day long. Well, here it is. 10.30 in the morning, your closing price is 123.24. I'm out. Have a nice day. I don't want to be in it anymore. Had a nice trade in BABA and had a couple of nice SPY trades today. Camp IWM. Where did we say the IWM would find overhead resistance? Didn't we say somewhere north of 156, or we said 156 to 156 and a half? 
I'm pretty sure it was something in there. Well, guess what? There it is. One day closing above could go either way. In this case, now we've closed three days above this pivot high and they're going higher. Revert to the weekly chart. Look what they closed above this week. This is pretty important stuff right here. Look at these moving averages. This is all this week. Look at this breakdown candle high all this week. That's not bearish behavior, but that's bullish behavior. Obviously, I don't mean to be Captain Obvious, but if you had to say, based on that, based on powering through the moving averages and getting above that breakdown candle high, if they're going to continue higher, where are they going? Well, they're going to the next breakdown candle high, right over here. This is the crash high. The high is 162.91. Can they get all the way up there? We don't know if they can or they can't, but they're making an effort for it. The transports. Second favorite market leading indicator, IWM is A number one, but this is the first favorite canary in the coal mine. Look at the day the transports had, up over 2%, almost 250 points. Didn't we say yesterday that they could get up to 10,006 something, whatever, whatever? Well, guess what? That represented this breakdown candle high, 10,698. So somewhere up in this vicinity is obviously where they're headed. Can they go fill the gap? At this point, they certainly could. They did the same routine with these moving averages. Now, under normal garden variety conditions, you would think that the market would get rejected at these moving averages, at least for a while, have to eat some time off the clock to build energy to get through those moving averages, but that's not what happened. They basically went up there a couple of weeks later. Here we are at the breakdown candle high. So we're going to go with the trend is your friend until it's not. We've got all the things we talked about earlier. That's fine. But at the end of the day, in your face is taking the market at face value, not guessing what might happen at some point in time at some price that we took a guess at. That's not how this business is run. How about the folks out in Silicon Valley? Here's our first puzzle piece of the night. Q's down three bucks, one percent. So here's what happened. When the market sold off in the afternoon, everything sold off. So the Q's sold off, and remember the SPY chart, it sold off, but the SPY had a jam session into the end of the day. The Q's did not. They bounced off the lows, but they're nowhere near their highs from earlier in the day. So that's interesting. It's a puzzle piece. It's on the table. Remember what we said earlier. We're looking for signs and signal of a trend change. This may be the first sign, not necessarily something to take action on just yet. However, it's a sign nonetheless. These are the things that represent the reasons why we look around the horn at a lot of different markets, at a lot of different charts, you never know what you're going to find until you look. You don't have to be looking for something specific. Let the thing find you. Conversely, to the Q conversation, the financials had a great day up 2%. And here we go. Above the moving averages, it was fine. We talked about this. They were basically eating time off the clock, but they hadn't been getting going. Now, today, they got going. Objective, 2512. Also up to 2519, give or take. That's the gap. We talked about it yesterday. Here's the gap, and here's the breakdown candle high. So somewhere in that neighborhood is A, where they're headed, and B, where they're likely to find some, at minimum, of from an intraday perspective of what? Say it together. Overhead resistance. What about Smash Mouth? Well, we're going to put this in the same camp or bucket as the Qs. Same move at the end of the day. Same bounce, different from the SPY. Puzzle piece on the table. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true, accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.